civilization has always created stories around being lost at sea, marooned on a desert island, and being shipwrecked. These fantastical stories have inspired the plot lines for long ago novels, as well as modern TV shows and movies. It's not hard to be captivated by the unlikely adventure of these survivors. Perhaps they're not always as unlikely as they may seem. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three cases of being stranded at sea. Three marinas in the Pacific Micronesian Archipelago set out from an atoll in a small boat only 7 metres long for what was supposed to be a very simple 43 kilometre journey to the nearby atolls. However, the sea had other plans as their boat was pushed off course. As they desperately attempted to get back on track, they ran out of fuel and were forced to drift at the mercy of the waves. Luckily, they eventually drifted upon Pikelot Island and were able to seek shelter there. Unluckily, the island was totally uninhabited and was 190 kilometres from where they had initially begun their journey. Search and rescue teams combed the waves and eventually asked neighbouring United States and Australian ships to join in the search for the missing men. After three days, an American military patrol helicopter was returning from its rounds when it had to change course to avoid a rain shower. A circumstance that turned out to be very lucky indeed for the stranded men. The pilots noticed a small boat on the beach of the supposedly uninhabited island. When they sank lower to take a closer look, they saw that it was next to a huge SOS carved into the sand. The helicopter alerted nearby vessels and Australian military ship Canberra on its return from exercises in Hawaii was able to dispatch a helicopter to deliver water and food to the men, who were healthy and in good condition despite their ordeal. The provisions held them over until a Micronesian ship was able to dock on the island and return them to their original destination. They aren't the first men to experience such an ordeal either. It's not uncommon that a small Pacific island fishing vessel gets knocked off course by the sea. In 2016, three other men found themselves in similar situations after swimming two miles to a different deserted island and being rescued by the United States Coast Guard who saw their giant letters spelling HELP carved into the sand. The men rescued from Pikelot Island have said that they were very grateful for the cooperation from so many coast guards and military patrols to ensure they were rescued so quickly and in good health. Philip Ashton Captured by Pirates Some fantastical stories sound like legends, but occasionally the legends are based off of true events. Philip Ashton was a member of a small fishing village near Boston, Massachusetts, and was 19 years old. In 1722, he captained a schooner named Milton to the Grand Banks for a cold fishing expedition as part of a larger fleet of 12 other fishing boats. As the boats were anchored into the port for the night, a merchant ship rowed towards Ashton's boat, and the sailors boarded the Milton under the guise of a social visit or news delivery. However, he quickly realised that it wasn't merchants who had just boarded his ship, when he wrote that they drew their cutlasses and pistols from under their clothes and began to curse at us, and demanded a surrender of ourselves and our vessels. The visitors were pirates. The invaders captured Philip and his crewmate and childhood friend, Joseph Libby, and held them prisoner aboard the psychopathic pirate, Edward Lowe's pirate ship. Lowe was known to sailors throughout the Atlantic for his savagery and mutilation of his prisoners. Stories of slicing men to pieces and cutting off a captain's lips and forcing him to eat them had garnered Lowe the reputation as one of the most feared pirates of his day, something that Ashton quickly learned was not a simple rumour. He was tied up with chains and beaten as the pirates tried to convince him to join their ranks. Libby, Philip's childhood friend gave in to their demands and joined the pirate crew, but Ashton remained resolute. Finally, the pirates stopped on Roatian Island in the Caribbean, north of Honduras, and the island was so small and desolate they thought it safe to bring Ashton inland as they collected food and hunted. However, Ashton was quick and managed to escape and evade his captors by hiding in the tree until they gave up and returned to the ship. They assumed that he would quickly pass away, as he was starving, with no supplies, ragged clothes, and no shoes. However, 
Philip Ashton managed to survive for almost a year and a half entirely alone, surviving off of raw turtle eggs and what fruits and vegetables he was able to scavenge, battling swarming mosquitoes, snakes, and stifling heat. He received one visitor in all that time. An Englishman managed to make it to land as he fled the Spaniards in a canoe laden with supplies such as a knife, tobacco, and flint to start fires. However, the man left to hunt one day and was never seen again, meaning the supplies were now Ashton's. At last, after 16 months alone on the island, two large canoes full of English woodcutters fleeing a fight between the Spanish and the Indians landed on the island and were able to rescue him. Ashton lived with them until he was able to return to Massachusetts on a passing ship. It had been two years, ten months, and fifteen days since he'd last set foot on Boston soil. Pedro de Serrano Pedro de Serrano was a Spanish sailor who lived during the 16th century and was marooned on an almost uninhabitable island in the Caribbean after he was shipwrecked on the coral reefs. However, he was miraculously able to live on the island for eight years. This earned him the title of the ultimate survivor. He was left on the island entirely alone as the sole survivor of the shipwreck, and all he had were the clothes on his back and some flint that he managed to recover from the wreckage. The island that he ended up on was a deserted island, about five miles across, with no fresh water, grass, or trees for shelter. He had to drink turtle blood for several days until he was able to collect rainwater from upturned turtle shells. He ate what he could scavenge, which on the island was limited to turtle meat, shellfish, and seaweed. His clothes soon rotted away, leaving him exposed to the elements and forced to bury himself in wet sand to escape the intense heat during the day. He used his flint to make a fire out of the dried seaweed that he kept burning in a fleeting hope that a passing ship might see the smoke and come to rescue him. Three years passed in this manner until another shipwreck delivered two more sailors to the island and Serrano rejoiced at the possibility of company. The men were initially horrified at the sight of him and were sure they were seeing a demon due to his waist-length beard which had grown stiff and tangled from salt water and the thick, coarse hair that had grown all over his body as protection from the harsh elements. However, once they got over the shock, they were able to swap their stories with each other, and for several days shared the gruelling tasks of survival on such a desert island. Unfortunately, overexposure caused one of the men to quickly go mad, and he passed away after attempting to eat his own arms, and the other fought so terribly with Serrano, they had to split the island in half and keep to themselves. Before long, however, the other sailor also passed away from the harsh conditions. So once again, Serrano was alone. Several ships passed the island on his time there, but the dangerous coral reefs and shallow water that had caused his own shipwreck prevented the passing vessels from being able to stop and rescue him. At last, almost eight years of solitude and incredible fortitude in the struggle to survive, a passing ship was able to get close enough to see the smoke signals and come close enough that he could swim out through the reefs to meet them and be returned to his native homeland of Spain. Unfortunately, by this point, he was driven mad by so many years alone and such incredibly harsh conditions. This meant he was never fully able to reintegrate into society. He struggled to meet the demands of being around others after almost a decade of relying only on his own strength and survival skills. Surviving after being shipwrecked and marooned isn't for the faint of heart. It takes a great deal of mental and physical fortitude to be able to retain the hope of survival, while also trying to be rescued and send distress signals to passing ships or planes. There's a reason that shipwreck stories are so popular, and the true stories behind many of them are even more amazing. So what do you make of these Stranded at Sea stories? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.